Pearl Beach is a little village about one and a half hours north of Sydney and it's a coastal village, it's on the beach. But I guess I think what makes Pearl Beach so unique is it's completely surrounded by national park and bush. That is its defining character, this little village in the bush. Our lovely clients that owned the block for a while really was just the end piece of land right on the edge of the national park surrounded by bush on three sides. What was really magic about it is there's this incredibly beautiful patch of blue sky. Actually, there was a clearing. I was just drawn to the clearing. That's where I wanted to sit. That's where you wanted to have your cup of tea. You wanted to sit on a rock in the sun, in the clearing, looking back at the bush. And so the whole building, the whole way we even thought about conceptually this building is just that it's a masonry form that wraps around this sacred clearing, protects from fire, and the idea is that there is no garden. It is simply going to be a building that emerges from the bush. And then on arrival, that whole entry sequence is a series of contrasts. So the big timber sliding screens open up and you're in this compressed breezeway. And then you turn and you go up the stairway and the stairway is outdoor and it's open to the sky. So you have this lovely moment that as you're ascending the stairs and you're going up, your eyes drawn up to the canopy of the plants and you get that completely separate experience. And then at the front door itself, it compresses again. When you do open the door and you see what's beyond with the house that opens right up, it's a complete contrast again. So you're in this light filled, very open area. And from that main living room, when you then move through the building, the view of the building slowly fans, so your eyes drawn down these corridors to very linear windows that are about focusing the eye completely on the tree trunks. Because we really did want to chase the sun and we wanted our living rooms and our outdoor space to be as elevated as possible, the secondary spaces are tucked underneath. As time passes in these dark, moody spaces, you just see plants in the bush, singular plants get light, these little beams of light on them, they kind of glow. You want to be connected to all of these things. We have asked the bush to come right up to our walls. It's a very immersive experience. There is the distant sound of the waves, but the much more predominant noises are those lovely, ever-changing noises of the bush, including the kookaburras. Outdoor living is something I am completely passionate about. I'm passionate about it in my work, and it's also personally how I live. I live outdoors. We joked a lot. I said, right, I'll give you an indoor shower, but I'll give you an outdoor one, and I promise you, I absolutely promise you, you will never ever, ever use the indoor shower. Oh, what if it's raining in winter, when it's cold? And I said, I promise you, that's when it's the best. That joy of showering under moonlight, for example, is just something that gives you a little bit of delight in your everyday life. We actually consider outdoor spaces as important as the indoor spaces right from the get-go conceptually. We think about these spaces that they need a floor and they need a wall and they need a roof and they need heating and they need cooling. They need incredible attention to the microclimate that they're creating, shade, breeze, etc., etc. And all these elements are then designed into these outdoor spaces. And if you do that, you can actually change your microclimate and you can ensure that outdoor spaces are used. The dilemma of the building is that it's got to respond to its beautiful bush site, not only just that we want to enjoy the bush, but we also have to protect from it because we are in the flame zone. It's got these thick masonry walls that wrap and protect with quite deep punctured framed windows. Pearl Beach itself, the village, has this long history of these beautiful timber pavilion buildings and I think that's what most people here are used to. But obviously they just cannot be replicated today with our sensibilities around bushfire. And so I think it probably has been a little bit of the talk of Pearl Beach. When Carl and Mima first approached me to design their building, they had quite a strong vision and design dream, if you want, for this off-form concrete sculpture in the bush. That's what they wanted. Off-form concrete to do, especially walls or an entire building out of off-form concrete, is actually an extraordinarily expensive material. But what we can do is we can still try and achieve a beautiful, homogenous, sculptural building in the bush, but we can do a hybrid, if you like. So it is this hybrid. There are elements of off-form concrete. And then we've mixed it, the predominant material in the walls is just a very humble, low-cost concrete block. Where the beauty and the movement of the project comes and the form really is through texture. 
and the way that the light responds to these large masonry walls. This low cost material has been elevated by taking a lot of care in how the blocks were laid and just the attention to that mortar joint so that we get just the right texture and movement when the light hits it. That allows us to have areas of deep recess and shadow. Where we've brought little touches of warmth and colour into the building, it was absolutely about looking at the palette of our beautiful surrounding nature and then bringing all those browns and greens into the building. In the more private areas of the house, where the main bedroom is and the little study area, we wanted to bring the beautiful deep reds of the surrounding tree trunks. So we sourced a grey iron bark floor. And then in the main living room, where we were doing our timber veneer joinery, we looked at black butt, and it's a feature grade black butt. The vertical grain of the timber speaks beautifully next to the sort of windows looking at the tree trunks. And then with the fittings and fixtures, we did try and use a lot of Australian products. We spoke to a lot of artisans, and so, for example, in the bathrooms, we have the beautiful Lindsay Ware ceramic sinks that have got the greens of the surrounding bush. And we have our beautiful Henry Wilson bronze handles, etc. and then Archie, a beautiful Archie, a fine light in the kitchen. So we did try and support where we could local manufacturers and, and bring kind of that local product into the house, which I do think helps it sort of belong. One of the strongest parts of the brief was that this was to be a quite a minimalist house. Both Mima and Carl were really quite drawn towards today Ando and that Japanese quite Zen aesthetic. What they were wanting was to have a place that was very calming and that they could actually then enjoy the passing of time, enjoy that light from the morning until the evening. The actual impact of that, to have this place where they could come and just have a different pace and really absorb the beauty and calmness of nature. This dense, lush foliage, towering trees. It was really having a massive impact on their lives. And to me, that is just, obviously, that's just so incredibly rewarding. I'm Polly Harbison from Polly Harbison Design, and this is the Pearl Beach Project.